Hi, just a quick aside on the power supply. A few people mentioned what happens if you say charge in a battery with this power supply and you disconnect the input voltage while you've still got that battery on the output, i.e. you're feeding a voltage back into the power supply and you switch off the input. What happens? Will the regulator blow? And uh, this is uh, quite a common scenario for uh, traditional linear power supplies. And let's take a look at it. If you've got your voltage regulator like this, you've got your input voltage, doesn't matter where it comes from, and you've got the output voltage of your power supply. If you're feeding back in a supply from a battery, say you're charging it or something like that, and it's going back in, what happens if you've still got the output battery connected, but you disconnect this input supply? And, well, you can blow up your regulator, and a lot of uh, uh, power supplies will typically or traditionally have a reverse protection diode on there so you don't pa uh, blow the uh, pass transistor in the voltage regulator and my design doesn't have that and uh, I didn't include that because the none of the app notes for the LT3080 actually show um, that including their own lab power supply circuit so I figure it's a new design should be robust enough that it doesn't need that but hmm Let's test it. All right, now what I've got here is I've got my uh, power supply circuit build up. Not that we actually need the circuit itself because we're just testing the regulator effectively. Um, but I've left the circuitry there as is. What I've got is I've got it hooked up to two external uh, power supplies up here. Uh, this one here is the uh, input uh, supply and this one is uh, feeding a voltage back out into the output of the voltage regulator. And what these uh, meters are measuring, I've set the output voltage to 5 volts here. So that's the output voltage of our regulator. This is our input voltage of our regulator. And this is the uh, current being fed back into the input from the external uh, power supply, just so we can monitor how much current's actually going back in when we switch this thing um, on or off and play with it. Now, of course, if I switch off my input voltage, I've got no input voltage here and my output voltage is nothing, okay? I'm not so, I'm not um, actually feeding in the output voltage. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch on this output voltage. So we're feeding a voltage back into the regulator and this will monitor the current. Remember, this is monitoring the output voltage of the regulator. So we should be able to force that output voltage higher than the 5 volts that it's trying to actually regulate. So I'll switch that on now. I've got it set to 5 volts, so it doesn't really change at all because they're the same voltage. But let me wind that up a bit. And uh, let's see if we can... There we go. Bingo. I can actually... I'm driving that output voltage from my external supply. My external supply is... six. Well, it's saying six point, it's measuring 6.25, and sure enough, it is. There, There it is. 6.26 so I'm feeding in that external supply now what happens let's actually well let, let's just leave it there let's say it's 6.2 volts doesn't really matter and let's switch off our input voltage and see what happens here we go and it's feeding 8 <laughs> milliamps back in uh, but it's doing it's doing nothing. There you go. We're still getting an input voltage being fed back through the regulator. So even though our circuit is actually disconnected, if we have a look at our circuit here, this switch is actually disconnected and we're, and we're measuring our input voltage, which is 5.57, because it's being fed back through the regulator. Remember, there, there is no diode there at the moment. Okay, so we're feeding the voltage back in and, well... Let's see if that has killed it. So I'll switch my input voltage back on. I'll switch my load voltage off. No, nah, it survived that quite well. Not a problem whatsoever. Let's wind the output voltage all the way up to... Okay, I've got a 12 volt input voltage. Let's wind the output voltage up to 12 as well. So there you go. I've got 12 volts output voltage and Let's switch off, let's switch that on and force the output voltage up to 12 volts. Bang, we've done that. It's only feeding you know, 10 milliamps uh, back into the thing, but let's switch our input voltage off and 
bang and our input voltage is uh, still 11.3 but I've switched it off and let's see if it recovers I'll switch the input voltage back on turn off the output and it's recovered no problems at all so we haven't killed this thing if you switch off the input voltage not at all all right it's time to get a bit drastic instead of just switching this input voltage off let's actually short it out to ground and see what happens so our output voltage is at uh, 12 volts let's force that on again bingo there we go we've forced our output voltage to 12 volts with the external supply and not only will I switch off the input voltage but I'll disconnect the leads from the power supply they're the input leads and I will short them and we'll probably see an increase in current here whoa yeah bingo whoa oh yeah there was some smoke somewhere you better believe it let's actually um, switch the input voltage back on and see if we've killed the regulator nope it's still fine it survived that no problems whatsoever bang we forced our output voltage to 12 volts and this time I'll probably hold it and see what happens oh yeah look at that threat well there we go oh what smoked check it out and the poor little sucker there never stood a chance little quarter watt resistor Wah. so you actually saw it there it was getting over three amps feeding back into that regulator all of that current must have gone through the uh, voltage regulator there's nowhere in the LT3080 there's nowhere else for it to go so let's uh, see if it's uh, if it's killed it or not I've disconnected the output and yeah something's gone on but our uh, current shunt resistor might have blown let me check that and uh, see what's happening let's measure our current shunt resistor should be one ohm but what 7.5k dead as a dodo okay I've replaced the uh, shunt uh, with a short I didn't bother uh, putting a one ohm resistor back in and let's switch the power input uh, supply back on and hey no problems whatsoever the regulator survived just fine so much for blowing the thing that was uh, over three amps if I recall from that meter going back through the LT3080 and there's nothing wrong with it at all it is a really quite a robust device uh, you know, I'd probably have to take it to its extreme limits to actually see where it blows well it seems we may have actually done some damage to it I um, re-hooked it back up and tried to uh, play around with it again and it was uh, it was kind of working but uh, the output was about uh, 1.8 volts or thereabouts tracking 1.8 volts higher than the set pin voltage so I replaced the regulator and um, and now it's it's just fine so um, I'm not sure what happened there because it you know it was working okay to begin with but then seems to have died so ah uh, bummer and there it is it actually uh, has a low of uh, 3.86 volts and it goes up to uh, a high of uh, seven odd volts and that should be zero to five so that regulator unfortunately we have killed it wow but that was a pretty uh, extreme case though I mean uh, you know shorting shorting this input directly um, here was a little bit extreme so if we did actually have the diode in there that would have uh, shunted all of the current through the diode and if you've got a big beefy you know five amp diode in there it should actually handle that uh, while actually preventing you know like a maximum voltage of like a volt across the uh, regulator there so do we actually need a diode across here well unless you uh, somehow uh, short out this or connect or this is connected through to your supply and you force your voltage to a much higher uh, voltage which then uh, can cause enough current to flow through the uh, device and into your low impedance uh, supply at the front end to actually kill the device then the answer is no not really it doesn't it seems to survive quite fine if you simply just uh, switch it off like that and of course if you're going if you're feeding in uh, big voltages from outside then you've got other things to worry about like you know uh, maximum voltage on your um, on your uh, op amps and your other components that are supplied from this positive input voltage here and well if you wanted to solve that then you'd have to have another regulator on the input here just to power all of your other stuff so you know 
I don't know. As it as it stands, the answer is not really. And if you remember the internal block diagram of the LT3080, here it is. It's got the um, standard NPN series pass element here. So when you feed in a uh, a voltage from the output and your input is either floating or at uh, grounded grounded potential, which it uh, certainly could be if this capacitor is discharged and you uh, input a voltage in here and you've got significant bulk uh, capacitance on your input or you're uh, clamping it deliberately uh, clamping it low for some um, overcurrent reason or something else then uh, you can get a uh, reversed bias situation in your um, NPN transistor here you can uh, reverse bias your base emitter junction and you can uh, actually blow that series pass transistor, not to mention uh, any other uh, internal circuitry in there. And if we take a look at a um, uh, standard 78 uh, series, 7805 voltage regulator, you'll note it's basically the uh, same thing. There's your series pass element, NPN, right there. And, and this is like a Darlington uh, configuration on the output here. And this is specifically the uh, Texas Instruments data sheet for the 78 uh, xx series and it specifically tells you reverse bias protection occasionally the input voltage to the regulator can collapse faster than the output voltage this can occur for example when the input supply is crowbarred during an output over voltage condition if the output voltage is greater than approximately 7 volts the emitter base junction of the series pass element internal or if you're using an external um, series pass transistor for extra current it can break down it can be damaged uh, and and to prevent this it's a standard industry practice practice to put a um, reversed biased uh, diode in there which actually limits the voltage across the input and output differential on the uh, voltage regulator. It's the same for the 7805 or for the LM3080 and uh, LT3080 sorry so whether or not you actually uh, on this power supply design or your own power supply design put that reverse bias diode it's up to you. I've it, I was able to damage an LT3080 uh, but then it but it actually recovered after that um, serious three amp uh, shorting so I'm not actually sure what happened to it after that I'd have to do further testing more methodical to find out exactly um, how to actually break the thing but it seemed actually to survive a fair amount and if you don't uh, short uh, V in then uh, it survived 40 volts no problems whatsoever uh, whether or not your other circuitry connected to there would survive 40 volts well you know that's up to your design uh, you could limit it with um, a Zener diode uh, clamping or something like that or you could have a Zener diode clamping on the output as well if your output if you've got a 0 to 10 volt um, bench power supply you might put say a 12 volt Zener on the output uh, so that you can't get uh, dangerously high voltages so you're going to blow your Zener before you're going to uh, well, the Zener should uh, clamp anyway. You might blow it, uh, depending on the capability of the supply you're hooking up. But it's really hard to uh, cater for all types of scenarios. If you're going to start applying, uh, you know, large voltages to the output of your power supply, well, you're eventually going to break something. So whether or not you put it in, I don't think I'll have it in my design. Um, but if uh, people want to add it, that's up to them because configurations might be different. Or a better solution might be one of these uh, TVSs or a transient voltage suppressor. They're also called transorbs and uh, all sorts of other trademark names like that from various manufacturers. And they're basically a uh, Zener diode, a high energy Zener diode to protect you against uh, over voltage conditions. And uh, they're, they're really nice. So if you had, say, a 0 to 10 volt uh, power supply, you might, say, use a 12 volt uh, one of these to not only uh, protect you from transient over voltage conditions feeding back into your supply but also uh, basically for uh, the, your negative protection as well because if we take a look at our uh, circuit here this d1 here this diode um, then if you uh, replace that with a uh, tvs instead of a shot key diode then you get uh, the best of both worlds high high voltage uh, over protection and also reverse voltage protection as well well worth using one of those 
And if we take a look at a data sheet for a typical uh, MPN transistor, in this case, we've only got a low power one. We've got a PN2222, also known as a 2N2222, which you're probably uh, familiar with. Now, the thing we're concerned with here is the uh, emitter base uh, breakdown voltage, which they specify. And you notice that it's not base emitter breakdown voltage, it's emitter base, which means that it's actually uh, the, the reverse voltage applied to the standard base emitter um, junction for an NPN transistor. In this case, it's only six volts. And as you uh, saw in the uh, LM7805 uh, data sheet, that was a very similar value as well. They said, uh, you know, order of seven volts. So that uh, that's really going to be the killer uh, inside the device. Okay, one last thing. I've now got the regulator circuitry uh, separated from the rest of the circuitry, so I don't blow up the rest. And I'm going to uh, wind the wick up on the output voltage. It's currently um, 12 volts. I'll wind that up and uh, I've got a fixed resistor there actually with the 10 microamps through to give me a 5 volt uh, out. So there's really nothing else connected on the input side and I'm going to force the output side up. So let's switch that voltage off. There we go. And let's switch the output voltage on. There it is. Okay, so we're feeding in our output voltage and let's wind that up, shall we? Let's wind it up. And uh, as you can see, wait, see, it's still, you know, there's there's really nothing flowing into that regulator, so I'd be surprised if there's any damage happening there at all. There's only a milliamp, 20 volts. Ah, oh, we're really feeding a lot, well, one milliamp, we're really feeding a lot of voltage into this uh, output uh, pin. Let me tell you, 30 volts, my supply only goes up to 40. <laughs> I think 40 is the maximum voltage for the LT3080. Don't quote me on that. But let's wind it up and all the way to what my supply is capable of, 41 volts. Okay, there you go. Let's wind it back down, switch it off. And uh, let's switch the uh, power back on and see if we've done any damage at all. None whatsoever works just fine. It's a nice, robust little device. I like it. Catch you next time.